Hey, what's going on? Uh, Kyle here from the band 10 Years. Uh, we're gonna do a walkthrough of the rig I'm using here on our acoustic tour in, uh, I guess, late summer 2016. They all blur together at this point, but uh, uh, yeah, let's get started. So uh, the drum kit here itself, the actual shells, uh, is a company called D-Drum. Uh, I started playing with those guys uh, last year, and this kit's just held up like a champion uh, over I would have to say over 200 shows by this point. Um, but uh, what we're doing here is an acoustic tour. It is a little different. It's a little less uh, bashy and a little bit more, uh, you know, sexiness. So uh, I did scale the kit down a little bit here. Um, instead of uh, clear heads, uh, I have some nice coated heads here. Evans coated. These are a little bit thicker, the G12s. Uh, nice deadening. Quite a bit of a different tone than we usually have uh, for our heavy set. These are uh, another huge difference is the Promark, uh, these are the lightning rod sticks, dowel sticks, so it's like halfway between a brush and a regular stick, but it just gives it nice and finessey. <laughs> A little bit of a dry sound, just real soft on the cymbals. Uh, being a tragic rocker, um, I brought two China cymbals on an acoustic tour. I'm sure my sound guy loves that. Um, but here I, ha I have a matching pair of uh, Saluda, this is a 13 and a 17, and the two of these together just sound great. Uh, I recently started playing Saluda cymbals. I'm pretty blown away and in love with them, I will say. Uh, they have characters of Zildjian and Pisces that I blended together, I would say, in a unique way that I really like. Um, got a little chime bell here. Uh, I have some 13-inch uh, Glory Series hi-hats. These have a real thick, uh, I guess they were the Fusion model, so they got a real chunky bottom. Kind of get that lightness of small hi hats. I've always been a fan of that. But that heavy hi hat gives you a little bit of just chunkiness to your stick work. Uh, up here we got a 17 inch Diamond Series Crash. We got the 18 inch, uh, I guess, matching one. I got a 21 inch uh, medium thin uh, dry ride here. I've had some rides out here that were so loud they were just blasting the vocal mic and it was awesome but it was like a Slayer ride in 10 years and I, it, we're, we're not quite that heavy so uh, this ride is perfect volume wise and it just has a nice a little bit of I guess modern jazziness to it which I really enjoy not overly pingy not overly metal Uh, as for the sizes I got here, uh, this is the D-Drum Pocket Series kit, at least parts of it. Um, on this particular tour, trying to get some different tones, I ended up using the stock snare drum that came with the kit. Now this is the 13 by 7 uh, Alder Tone snare drum. Um, on our heavier stuff, I have a, uh, a brass 5x14, which is just better for the heavy show, but this one's got a nice musicality to it. <laughs> Complements the, the tone we're going for on this tour very nicely. Uh, this is uh, a 12-inch rack tom, I believe, by nine-inch depth, eight or nine, and uh, I got the 16 by 14-inch floor tom, uh, 20 by 18-inch kick drum. Uh, the only hesitation I had getting this kit was that this was the first kit I ever owned that had a 20-inch bass drum, and I was intrigued but nervous at the same time. You know, 22, um, 24 is way too big, being that I'm. Um, 5.6, it's a monstrous drum. But the 20, you know what, it's pretty mighty. Um, both my front of house sound guy and myself, uh, we, we enjoy the tone of this drum quite a bit. So one of the highlights of this acoustic tour for me has been the chance to do some keyboard playing, uh, particularly on this show, a lot of piano, and then some ambient pad stuff here and there. Uh, it takes me back quite a few years ago. Uh, I played in bands throughout the Chicago area uh, in my younger years where I would do some percussion stuff, keyboards, and switch back and forth. So the chance to do that uh, with 10 years on this tour means a lot to me personally. 
And uh, this is an especially cool show, uh, Home Bar, Arlington Heights. So it's uh, this is my time to pass go and collect $200, being that I'm from Chicago myself, and I spent a lot of years on the music scene out here uh, in the late 90s and early 2000s. Um, so this keyboard is a really cool remnant of that, actually. Um, this is a Roland XP30, uh, probably about 15 years old, 16 years old. And uh, I took this on a lot of gigs around the Chicago area. Um, back in those days, I had a band called Dominion uh, and another band called Stone Mazes. Um, so it's really nostalgic for me to play this board that, you know, yeah, maybe some of the sounds are a little bit old, but you know what? It still sounds pretty fucking killer, even to today's standards. And it's just a, a, a joy to play it, you know, on this tour around the country. A lot of the tunes, when I do come over here, I, I'll stay here for the whole song. Uh, there is one song uh, called Writing on the Walls where I actually do, uh, both myself and Chad do an instrument switch uh, to duplicate the record sound as authentically as possible. Um, so I start off on piano and then for the finale of the song, I move over to drums. Uh, simultaneously, Chad is going from ukulele, plugging into bass, and then we switch gears from there. So that's a pretty fun moment in the show. Um, there's another cool moment in a song called Tightrope, where there's just, really, it's just about four bars where I, I just come to play a quick pad part. It's only three notes, but then I'm just doing the drum part with one hand. So that's just a fun kind of showy thing that I get to do that I would never be able to do on a regular tour, so it's fun. Hey, I'm Tater from 10 years, and uh, I've been in the band since day one, I guess, the Sir Old Balls. Uh, we're doing an acoustic rig uh, breakdown, which is interesting because it's acoustic. So I don't know if they gave you the right memo on the day to come. I don't think that they did. But So we're going to go through our humongous pedal boards, because you have big pedal boards when you do acoustic. Um, so here's what we have for our pedal board here. As you can see, we have a tuner, and we have a direct box, which basically is the guitar cable running into a microphone cable. Now this takes uh, three men to come in each day and to put it together for me so that it will make sure that uh, it's, it's working good. So before we go and do any show, I, when I was a kid, I, I loved Michael Jordan, so I have to wear a pair of Jordans, and that's the most important feature of any acoustic guitar rig breakdown is my Jordans and then I have another pair for the heavier shows believe it or not it works it's, it's like they look cool but then you got ankle support for when you're an old man like me trying to play a young man's game so we've got um, uh, the acoustic tour now this this Gretsch is, is my one of my favorite acoustics that I've got um, beautiful inlay I remember they had it at the guitar center I worked at in Knoxville and uh, I just thought the it was just the most amazing uh, guitar that I inlay I'd ever seen, and it sounded real. You know, it's like a parlor style guitar, so it's got the string always does this. sound it's just very different than any other acoustic so it's tough to find a, a match to blend it all together you know what I mean this one just sounds very honky honk honk you know I, mean, I remember that's one of the first thing I learned on tour uh, this guy in a band called dry kill logic he was like uh, he played an old ESP guitar nothing fancy active pickup. I don't really like active pickups I'm passive <laughs> that's funny um, but uh, in an old like Marshall 2000 and I was like dude what is up with your guitar tone how are you getting that and he goes right here kid and I thought I don't know anything about the electric guitar so learning <laughs> yeah whatever's on there you make it work but yeah this this is my favorite one I haven't been using it that much because I bought a 12 string on this tour when it comes to guitars and stuff like that, they're just unique. And I, I like stuff that's not the typical, speaking of, about as typical as you can get when it comes to a 12 string. But with our um, professional install of the pickup there, 
because they had a nicer 12 string but it didn't have a case but I really like this I, this, I thought this one played better and it was like 250 bucks at some great little music store in uh, oh god where were we at in Boston so it was a little music store I can't remember the name of it I should have I should I should remember things but I don't so it's got a cool like, kind of gypsy my wife makes me play all that gypsy shit at home Our sound guy, I love him, but he's kind of a dick. So, but he's great. But so he was like, "Well, you got to play this one guitar because it'll change the EQs on everything." So I kind of been forced to just kind of wing it at times, which has been a lot of fun for me because it's like difficult because some parts just don't work with our songs, but some really sound really cool. Shoot it out. Rhythmic. So it's just, you know, your standard 12 string guitar, which you, if you, a real pain in the ass, they, they always say you just, you buy a 12 string and you just tune it. So this one's been pretty good about staying in tune or not staying in tune, whatever it is. But you have to play it and kind of hit it harder to make it go into, because there's just more strings to be out of tune. But if you can be out of tune in the right way, then it, it works and pisses off everybody else in the band that's trying so hard to be perfect, you know? But so, and then this pickup, I was basically needed to be able to get it out front, and I know our sound guy Josh won't put a microphone in front of it, which makes sense. So they put that in, and I think they put it in backwards because I think it's. But either way, we'll get around to it. It's got tape on it; it works, you know. So I just kind of switch out according to the set, and then sometimes according to necessity because I haven't had. He's going into the next song, and I'm still on this guitar or that guitar. So it makes it. Uh, dangerous kind of at times because you get comfortable playing one guitar one way and then you look down and it's just everything's a little bit different you gotta get, be a, pay, have some caffeine and you make sure you're paying attention yeah, it's cool it's a cool and sit around and play hendrix It's like 12 string songs you have to just sit around and play because they're written on 12 strings. This is our uh, lighting guy. I bought his guitar because he was like, I just wanted to have a backup. And uh, it sounds pretty good, it's pretty typical. You know, I've got my nice ones at home. If you like anything, don't take it on tour because it will get destroyed. So, you know, I've got a, a 1932 National Resonator my wife got for me. It's uh, pretty outrageous. Some nice guitar to run. But uh, so we got the Jordans, right? That's all it really is. You know, <laughs> that's about it. Hey, I'm Matt. For Ten years. Uh, we're gonna talk about this acoustic guitar that I've managed not to uh, lose or terribly damage in the 20 so years I think I've had it. It's definitely been through some things. Right here, uh, we were actually living in Los Angeles in 2004, and our bass player was hanging out with some people, and this guy stepped a hole through this thing. And uh, I thought it was out of commission for a long time, and I had taken it home. And while we were out on tour, my mom had a guy in Tennessee out in the middle of nowhere glue the thing back together, and you can't even really tell that it even happened. But there was literally a giant foothole in this right here at some point. I love this thing, man. I got it. had a buddy that played these tailors, and I just loved it so much I ended up buying my own. It took me like three years to pay it off because I was like 18 and it was like a $3,000 guitar, but I still have it at 35, so I guess I can't really uh, say it was a bad investment. I like to use lighter strings because I like to bend. I use, I think, 11s on these, but you can't get too light on an acoustic because it's got to have a full sound, but I like to bend a little bit, so if you get any too thick, you can't, you can't move the strings around, so you got to use at least something a little light. We threw an extra pickup in here on this tour just to get a... Uh, kind of a dual sound because there's a pickup in the body but this kind of helps us get a low end and a high end and just blend it together really well. This is my comfy seat. It's not always too comfy.
because I got to share it with Jesse, our singer. So she decided to sit down. I got the acoustic. I kind of got a got an edge over here, a little off the edge. Got the two tuners. Since I got the two pickups, like I was talking about, we set them up this way so I can turn both on and off at one time. Because otherwise, I would mess that up horribly. That's about my world over here, though. Hi, my name's Evan. I'm the opening act on the 10 Years and Finger 11 acoustic tour. Uh, I play piano. I'm going to show you a bit about the uh, bass rig in 10 Years, though. This right here, it's, uh, it's a larger guitar. It's missing two strings. Uh, you, you sort of pluck it like you would with a, with like a feather of a chicken. Like plucking it. Okay? So that one's uh, brown, like a light brown a little rounder than uh, your other larger guitar. This is a, a precision guitar. And the precision guitar also missing two strings. You also pluck it like you would a feather of a chicken or a duck, something along those lines, like, a, like poultry, essentially. So that's what we have as far as the larger guitars go. Then we have this tiny guitar, also missing two strings. We can do a little bit of pu plucking like that as well. That one's tuned really, really oddly. Uh, pretty weird looking guitar, if you ask me. But, uh, you know, you can also strum it. And it also comes with the, uh, the pedal effect. Where... So that's essentially how you play the tiny guitar. That's essentially everything we have for the bass rig here in uh, 10 years. Oh, we have the, of course, the. Uh, what do we call this? Uh, the, the Sam's amp? This is Samuel's amp. Typo. This yeah, they, typo they just right they, they seem to have spelled it wrong. Uh, and of course we have a, I don't know what that stands for, UKE, uh, Universal uh, Keyboard, oh it looks like a T, so uh, Universal Keyboard Technology, that's what that is. And uh, you just kind of press that a few times, and that's how you get the tone. It's really fantastic. Yeah. Mm -hmm.